how to reverse engineer your sales goals and plan your projects and tasks. In the last video, we talked about the four categories of projects that go into planning your sales goals. In today's video, we're going to talk about how we can reverse engineer these goals and calculate it for each category and break them down into digestible tasks so that we can actually achieve our sales goals. If you haven't watched that video yet, make sure to check it out right here. If we haven't met yet, I'm Karma Hunter, brand mentor and a conversion strategist. I help online coaches, consultants, and digital entrepreneurs create a pipeline of quality leads so that they never have to worry about where their next client is coming from with evergreen strategies so that they never have to redo everything and, and get overwhelmed and burnt out. So today we're going to reverse engineer our sales goals, measurable goals. For the sake of this video, we're going to set a monthly revenue goal. Let's say $2,000 for the month. And we're going to think about how much our offer is. For the sake of this video, let's do simple math and we're going to say it's a thousand dollars. So what is our conversion goal? That means we're going to need to convert two clients next month in order to make $2,000, right? That's simple math. I'm sure you've heard of this in many places before. Now, when we're thinking about this, we got to think about what has been working for us. How have we been converting clients? What's the highest conversion strategy been if you are a coach consultant a service provider and if you have a high ticket offer it's going to be through conversations you're going to need to get on sales calls in order to book your clients in order to sign a new client and close the sales and especially if you are new and if you haven't sold your offer 10 to 20 times at the price point you want to sell it. I wouldn't recommend you to send them to a sales page or run ads and things like that. I would definitely recommend you to get on sales calls and have those conversations in order to convert. This is almost like your market research so that you can take what you learn from those conversations and then apply those to your evergreen process so that you don't have to get on sales calls anymore. But before you validate your process, before you validate your sales process, your conversion process through sales calls 10 to 20 times at this price point. Now that we know our strategy on how we're going to convert our clients, how we're going to uh, convert to those two sales for the month, we need to think of and calculate how many sales calls we're going to get on. Now, the average conversion rate for that is 10% for industry average. This can be less when you first start, or this can be a lot higher if you are already good at sales. But the industry average is 10%. So we're going to go with that. And in this context, when we say conversion rate, we are basically looking at the amount of sales calls we need to get on versus the amount of clients we book, right? So if you wanna actually close two sales for the month and get two clients, we're gonna need to get on 20 sales calls for the month, right? So that's our conversion goal for the month. We are gonna go to our lead nurturing goal and calculate that. Well, lead nurturing goal, if you already have warm leads, right? If you don't have warm leads just yet, you're going to need to look into lead generation goals. And when I say warm leads, I mean your email list, I mean your Facebook group, your LinkedIn group, your pods, your um, Slack channel, your WhatsApp group. The, the channels you have warm leads who already interacted with you before who already know about know some about what you have to say and who who gave you consent to consume your content right 
Those are the warm leads. Mind you, I didn't say followers. It's not your followers. Your followers are not warm leads. So we may generate some leads with followers, but we're looking into those warm leads we already have in our pipeline in order to calculate our nurturing lead nurturing goal. We're gonna pick one. I don't want you to say, oh, I'm gonna nurture my email list. Oh, I'm gonna nurture my Facebook group too. I'm gonna nurture my Slack channel too. No, just pick one. We're gonna make this simple. Now, once you have these processes already in place, you can add more, start with one first. So think about where you have most of your warm leads and nurture those. For the sake of this video, we're gonna select nurturing our email list. Now, how are we gonna set our lead nurturing goal for that? Because lead nurturing, e nurturing our email list is a strategy. How we nurture those leads, there are different tactics for that, right? What are some of the tactics? Um, could be send them to a webinar sequence, could be sending a video training series, could be a, sending a um, conversion sequence, could be uh, inviting them to a live webinar or challenge. It could be different things. Um, let's say for the sake of this video, we're gonna say conversion sequence. And conversion sequence is um, what we call in my business a series of emails uh, that has, each email has a different uh, purpose. Each email is given a different type of value and they all have a different purpose so that uh, it increases and it actually nurtures that lead into conversion. So how do we set our goal? Here's an example. I'm gonna send a conversion sequence to everybody that booked a call with me within the last six months. Or as an example, another example, um, you can say, I'm going to invite everybody in my email sequence to a live masterclass, right? And again, I want you to pick just one. I don't want you to pick multiple. I want you to pick one. So now that you have your lead nurturing goal, they said, I'm going to send a conversion sequence to everyone that booked a call with me within the last six months. That's your goal, right? Now you can break them down into digestible tasks. So how we're gonna do that? We're gonna basically write down each step that goes into completing, executing, and completing that project. So for my business, in order for us to send a conversion sequence to everyone that booked a call with me within the last six months, here are some tasks that we need to do. First, we're gonna need to outline the emails. What is each email for? Second, we're gonna have to draft each email in Google Docs, right? Third, we're gonna insert relevant links, videos, images. Fourth, we're gonna segment or tag our leads in our CRM tool, meaning if we're not sending the email to the entire list, we're gonna need to either segment the leads we have. Um, and different CRMs is different. Sometimes you categorize by segments. Sometimes if you put, a, put them onto a different list, sometimes you um, create tags for them, depending on your own CRM. What does that take you, right? So that the emails don't go out to every single person in your email list. Unless your goal is sending an email to your entire email list, um, you would segment them or tag them or put them in a different list. Once we do that, we're gonna need to put the draft of the emails into our CRM platform. So that's gonna take us to create each email, uh, put the drafts in each sequence, and then another task would be scheduling each email. And once the emails are scheduled, setting up follow-up emails or retargeting emails. These are all different tasks 
that go into that one single project. And as you work in your business and work on different projects, I want you to make these workflows. I want you to literally exactly write down each task that go into executing that one project so that you can have operating procedures so that you don't have to think about, oh, what was I supposed to do next? Or was I supposed to create images next? Or was I supposed to uh, schedule this? And whenever you have a team or when you have an assistant, that way you can give these workflows to them and then they can complete it for you. Select just one lead nurturing goal. And I want you to break that goal down into digestible tasks and create yourself a workflow. In the next video, we're gonna talk about the tactics that go into our lead generation goals and our content plan. Let me know in the comments below, which projects do you need to create a task list for? See you in the next video.